Crim 2 News 10 at 10 begins now with Mark Hammerhan and Jeremy Legou. We are tracking some breaking news at this hour. Two people were shot in Royal City, Washington tonight. That's according to the Grant County Sheriff's Office. Deputies say both people have been taken to the hospital. Their conditions are not known at this hour. They also say there is no outstanding suspect. The circumstances surrounding the shooting also unknown at this hour. We are working to confirm more details with the Sheriff's Office. We will bring you updates as soon as we get them. Good evening and thank you for joining us for Creme 2 News 10 at 10, where we give you more news in less time. It is an exciting time to be a basketball fan. In just a few days, the teams that make March so mad find out when and where they are playing for the NCAA tournament. We're not quite there yet, but this is a live look at Las Vegas, where a bittersweet tournament is underway for Pac-12 fans. The last one for the dissolving conference. That's also where the WSU men's team just wrapped up their game against Stanford tonight. We have team coverage at this hour with our sports team here in the studio and outside of T-Mobile Arena. We'll also hear from Creme 2's Nathan Hyun about the tournament preps right here at the Spokane Arena. But first, let's get straight to our Andrew Quinn with tonight's highlights. Andrew. Good evening, Mark. The Cougs looking to wash that bad taste of defeat to UW out of their mouths tonight down in Las Vegas. Stanford led this game at the first media timeout, but the Cougs, they'd get it going from there. Jalen Wells buries the three, and WSU takes the lead for the first time. A few minutes later, Isaac Jones would flush back-to-back -back buckets, including that dunk, to put the Cougs up six. Then it was Andre Yakimovsky's turn. A triple here puts WSU up seven. And hey, who needs two shoulders? One's enough for the king of North Macedonia. He hit a trio of triples in the first half and led the Cougs with 11 points as WSU led by 16 at the break. Stanford would try and climb back in the second half, but Miles Rice would put an end to that mess. A steal and jam puts the Cougs back up by 16. Wells would follow with a three. Rice and Wells both had 14 points in this one. Jones would finish with 16 to lead six Cougs in double figures as WSU knocks off Stanford 79-62. The Cougs advance to the Pac-12 tournament semifinals. With more, here's Krem 2 Sports Director Travis Green in Sin City. Washington State seemed to hit a bump in the road after the win at Arizona. The Cougs dropped two of their final four regular season games. Well, a week off sure seemed to do the trick as six Cougs finished in double figures in the win over Stanford. Um, we're an unselfish group. We love to see the next person win. Uh, so I think that kind of went out and displayed tonight. Uh, we had 18 assists. It's been, a, it's been a long time since, since we've been in that category, but if we just keep doing that, you know, the sky's the limit for us. Two of the six in double figures were Kamani Huensu and Ruben Chinyelu off the bench. Two guys primarily known for their defense. We call him our, our French Army knife for a reason. He's kind of, he can, he can play all over the floor, and tonight he was terrific. And then Ruben's just like an emerging talent. He just, uh, he's a beast. You know, he's a young guy, and then you just love to see him when he, he's just, he, he gives everyone a little lift when he gets going. He's got a lot of charisma. Um, it was good, you know, it's something I was expected, you know, just come out and, you know, take care of business. So it's nice being able to do that and show that, you know, this is what we can do. Andre Yakomovsky bounced back in a big way, 13 points for him. He'd been battling a shoulder injury. I asked him post game if that full week of rest helped, and he said it sure did, evident by his game. So the Cougs advance to the semifinals with their look to do something the program's never done, win a pair of games at the Pac-12 tournament. Tip-off for that one will be 7.30 on Friday. Reporting from T-Mobile Arena, Travis Green. Sports. All right, Travis, thank you very much. And Spokane is preparing to host their first NCAA tournament game since 2016. Those games are already close to selling out, and people are certainly excited. Grem 2's Nathan Hyun tells us about one local university that has the honor and the task of organizing the event. Fans and businesses are getting ready for the NCAA tournament to take over Spokane. That includes the University of Idaho, who are hosting the games. The wait is almost over. We are so looking forward to working up in Spokane. For the University of Idaho, the host school for the first and second rounds of the NCAA tournament held in Spokane. U of I won the right to host after a competitive bidding process in 2020. We have a whole checklist of everything that you need to have done or should have done ahead of time. That's Terry Golick, the University of Idaho Athletic Director. She says the university is in charge of making sure everything is ready to go from the court and basketballs to hotels, practice schedules, and more. We want to knock it out of the park. We want to be the best host facility 
or entity that we can. 100 volunteers will also play a part in making the event a success. I'm just grateful that uh, they reached out and, and I, I get this opportunity again to, to help them. Volunteers like Freddie Rico, who volunteered at the NCAA Women's Basketball Tournament held in Spokane in 2022. He's excited to get back. They call Spokane Hooptown, uh, you know, for, for a reason. I think this, is, this community just embraces uh, basketball. Rico will be in charge of court supervising and walking players to press conferences. He couldn't pass up the opportunity. Volunteering gives me an opportunity to kind of give back, but also help the universities. And I mean, how can you go wrong? You get to see some really good basketball. Golic hopes this year's tournament will lead to more opportunities in the future. It gives great exposure to our university if you host a great event and People usually ask you back again and again. The University of Idaho has already been tasked with hosting the 2025 NCAA Women's Basketball Tournament in Spokane. The University of Idaho Athletic Director says the school will have its logo on the court during the tournament. Gala can't wait for the games to begin. In Spokane, Nathan Han, Krem 2 News. And we are just days away from Selection Sunday. We'll find out where our teams are headed and who they're going to play in the first round of the NCAA tournament. CBS's Selection Show starts this Sunday at 3 p.m. On Krem 2, right after that coverage, we're going to bring you a special edition of Krem 2 News at 4 o'clock with team coverage of reaction from Gonzaga, Washington State, and Eastern Washington. Well, despite getting nice and warm today, our overnight lows are going to drop by about 20 degrees from where those daytime highs were. It means most of us wake up to temperatures down near or below freezing early tomorrow morning. But don't worry, by tomorrow afternoon, we're talking temps back on the rise. We're in the mid and upper 50s in eastern Washington and north Idaho, 60s out in central Washington. But all of that heat likely sticks around in the days to come. The reason being a massive ridge of high pressure building overhead but not just any ridge. It's a blocking pattern or a big one that's not going anywhere. So the next few days are a sign of things to come. 57 Friday afternoon, 62 Saturday, 65 on Sunday. Even those overnight lows start bumping up in the days to come. Tomorrow near freezing, but by the weekend, those overnight lows stay above it. All right, Jeremy, thank you very much. And now to our night beat with a quick look at today's top stories. The city of Spokane is facing a $50 million deficit. Mayor Lisa Brown told Krem 2 it could lead to impacts on basic city services, things like filling potholes and maintaining reliable sanitation and water. But how do we get here? Mayor Brown blames a lot of factors, but mainly inflation, rising compensation costs, and the past use of federal money. Well, today, city leaders recommended cuts to city jobs, auditing employees' medical benefits, and looking for a new supplier for city supplies and equipment. In a statement to Krem 2, the mayor said that she is confident that they will find a solution. The trial continued today for a former Idaho State trooper accused of killing his wife. In February of 2021, Daniel Howard said his wife shot herself, but detectives say it looked more like a homicide. Today, the defense tried to establish Howard's character through the testimony of his longtime friend. But you're believing him because he said so, right? That's a kind of a question in a vacuum, sir. I believe him because I know him. The judge later restricted that testimony after learning the friend watched a live stream of the trial last week, which is not allowed. We still don't know if Howard, the man charged in this case, will take the stand, but the defense plans to call its last witness on Monday. The Stevens County Sheriff's Office and the U.S. Marshals say hundreds of tips from the public led to the arrest of a wanted fugitive this morning. Law enforcement found David Cato in Ponderay County. He was wanted on burglary charges, but is now facing additional charges for assault, weapons and drug possession and eluding police. Deputies say Cato surrendered at a home in the Newport area. And that was your night beat. To learn more about any of these stories, just head to our website. That's creme.com. And that was your Krem 2 News 10 at 10, where you get more news in less time. But don't go to bed yet. A major snowstorm is slamming Colorado, bringing cities like Denver to a halt. How much has fallen so far? Coming up at 1020 tonight. I mean, there's nothing blatant in here, blatantly sexual. But first, new body camera footage shows Cooney County Sheriff Bob Norris browsing library books. But that visit, hardly for pleasure, how it relates to a bill moving through Idaho's legislative session in just 90 seconds.